Today is June 6th, 2022, and the Summit of the Americas is opening in Los Angeles, California. This is a meeting, well, it's supposed to be a meeting of all of the countries in the Americas, but the U.S. government, which is hosting the Summit of the Americas, has refused to invite Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. In response to this, several countries in Latin America have refused to attend at least several leaders in Latin America have refused to attend. And basically the summit is a total disaster. It's a complete diplomatic failure for the US government. Washington was trying to use this meeting to diplomatically isolate the three socialist governments in Latin America, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. And it has been a complete failure. One of the most important and one of the largest countries in Latin America, Mexico, the U.S. southern neighbor has refused to attend. At least president of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, known as AMLO, A-M-L-O, it's the acronym of his name. AMLO has refused to attend the summit. Instead, he's sending his foreign minister, Marcelo Ebrard, to, on his behalf. And AMLO, this morning on June 6th, gave his daily press conference and he condemned the exclusion of numerous countries from the Americas. And he also gave an incredible speech, which I'll get to in a bit, in which he condemned the illegal US blockade on Cuba. And he called it, he compared it to genocide. He said it's similar to genocide. And furthermore, the new left-wing president of Honduras, her name is Samara Castro, she has also made it clear that she is not attending the Summit of the Americas and the democratically elected socialist president of Bolivia, Luis Arce, has also said that he is not attending the Summit of the Americas. There are also some countries in the Caribbean who say that they're not going to attend. And today is the beginning of the summit. So we will know in the days to come who in Latin, excuse me, who in the Caribbean attends the summit. But we know for sure that the presidents of Mexico, Bolivia, and Honduras are not attending the summit. Obviously, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua are not attending the summit. So we're talking about numerous countries representing a huge chunk of Latin America are not going to be attending. And of course, who is attending? Well, the far right leader of Brazil, the fascist president, Jair Bolsonaro, a strong supporter of military dictatorships who supported the Pinochet dictatorship, Bolsonaro is attending, and he actually has personal one-on-one -on -one meetings with U.S. President Joe Biden. The right-wing narco president of Colombia, Ivan Duque, who is closely linked to drug trafficking and death squads, he is attending as well, along with the right-wing president of Uruguay. So all of the major right-wing leaders in Latin America are attending, but many of the left-wing leaders are not attending. And then finally, we see that Argentina's president, a centrist at best, I mean, center left, but really a centrist, Alberto Fernandez, he is attending. And he said that he's going to speak on behalf of the CELAC, which is the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. It's an alternative to the OAS, the U.S. dominated organization of American states. And then finally, the new millennial liberal leader of Chile, who some people call a leftist, but he's not a leftist. He's a liberal. He's a social democrat at best. His name is Gabriel Boric. He is attending. And Gabriel Boric has spent many months attacking Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, attacking Russia, attacking China. And now he's taking his first foreign trip as president. He just visited Canada. And now he's going to visit the United States and meet with Joe Biden and trying to divide the Latin American left on behalf of US imperialism while attacking actually existing socialist forces in Latin America and while embracing US imperialism. So the you know, centrist liberal forces in Latin America are breaking with the left, but the actual left-wing forces like in Bolivia, Mexico, and Honduras are refusing to attend the summit. So I want to go now to summarize what Andres Manuel López Obrador, the Mexican president, said in his daily press conference on the morning 
of June 6th because he gave an incredible speech explaining why he's not attending. This is an article in El Financiero, which is a mainstream corporate media outlet in Mexico. It's part of Bloomberg, the corporate media network Bloomberg. And they published this headline titled, The Commercial Blockade of Cuba is, this is quote, quote, is a type of genocide. And that's a quote from AMLO, the Mexican president. And he referred to in his press conference, AMLO referred to the blockade as, quote, a type of genocide and also, quote, a violation of human rights. Now, the U.S. blockade in Cuba has gone on for over 60 years, and it is completely illegal, according to international law. Every year at the United Nations, 99% of the countries on Earth vote to condemn the illegal U.S. blockade. The only countries that usually vote with the United States to support the blockade are apartheid Israel and sometimes the narco regime in Colombia and the fascist regime in Brazil of Jair Bolsonaro and sometimes the Nazi infiltrated regime in Ukraine. In addition to saying that the U.S. illegal blockade on Cuba is a type of genocide, AMLO also confirmed that he is not attending the Summit of the Americas in California in protest of the refusal of Washington to invite Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. And he talked about, this is the exact quote of the blockade, of his comments of, about the blockade against Cuba. And he said that the U.S. blockade, this is a quote, prevents foods and medicines from being able to arrive to the Cuban people. That is a type of genocide, a tremendous violation of human rights. And then he says, I don't accept hegemony of anyone, not of China, not of Russia, and not of the United States. Now, of course, he says China and Russia to make it, make it seem you know, very impartial and neutral. But a president of Mexico saying, I don't accept the hegemony of the United States is a really big deal. That is a very significant development, considering Mexico is a country with a massive border it shares with the United States, and the majority of Mexico's trade is with the United States. Now, this speech by AMLO, this decision, is extremely historic because exactly 20 years before, the former right-wing president of Mexico, of the, of the right-wing PAN party, his name was Vicente Fox, not only did he act on behalf of the U.S. government, he created a massive scandal because back in April of 2002, exactly 20 years ago, Vicente Fox called the then Cuban president Fidel Castro and he famously told Fidel Castro that all he could do is he could eat and leave. At, because back in 2002, in Monterrey, the northern city in Mexico, Mexico was also hosting the Summit of the Americas. And what happened is Vicente Fox, the right-wing Mexican president, he called Fidel Castro and he told him, look, I don't want you to embarrass me. George Bush, the U.S. president, George Bush, this war criminal who just launched the war in Afghanistan and was on the verge of launching the war in Iraq. Vicente Fox said to Castro, he said, I don't want you to embarrass Bush and embarrass Mexico. So what you can do is you can come to attend this meeting, you can eat, you can meet with me for 30 minutes, and then you need to leave and go back to Cuba because George Bush is coming. This is an article in CNN, uh, CNN en Español. This is the Spanish language arm of CNN. And the headline is, eat and you can leave. You, can, you eat and you leave. The anecdote between Vicente Fox with Fidel Castro. And then they talk about how in April of 2002, when they were about to uh, hold the extraordinary summit of the Americas in the city of Monterrey, the president of Mexico, Vicente Fox, he had a shameful situation with the Cuban president, Fidel Castro. And he said, this is the quote here. So Vicente Fox called Fidel Castro 
And he said, listen, Fidel, so you have an invitation where you can join me to eat. And that will be at 1 p.m. in the after. It'll be 1 p.m. But at 1.30, while we're ending, while we're finishing eating, you need to leave. And then he, he said, oh, they don't have the rest of the quote here. But he said, you need to, the video is not available anymore. I guess it was taken off YouTube. So much censorship on YouTube. But anyway, he said, okay, you can eat with me for half an hour. And then you need to leave because George Bush is coming. So that is the complete 180 that we've seen in Mexico 20 years before the right wing U.S. puppet president of Mexico, Vicente Fox, was telling the leader of Cuba, Fidel Castro, that he needs to leave Mexico and go back to Cuba in, uh, so, not, so as not to embarrass Mexico in front of its imperial lord, George Bush, the U.S. president. Well, now the left wing president of Mexico, AMLO, who consistently has an approval rating of around 70%, an extremely popular leader, he is saying that he's not even going to attend the Summit of the Americas in the United States. And instead, he's only sending his foreign minister on his behalf. Now, he's not the only leader. I also mentioned that the new left-wing president of Honduras, Samara Castro, she is not attending either in protest. This is an article in Prensa Latina, and it, the headline is, without its president, Honduras will be in the, some of the Americas, but the new president is not attending. Instead, they're sending their foreign minister, Enrique Reina, who's attending on behalf of Honduras, but the president of Honduras is not attending, Samara Castro. And she tweeted on May 11th, Samara Castro tweeted, if, if all of the countries, all of the nations in the Americas are not there, it is not a summit of the Americas. She criticized the U.S. for refusing to invite Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, and made it clear that she is not going to attend. And her foreign ministry just confirmed today, June 6th, that she's not going to attend. So that is yet another blow. And then finally... We also saw that the foreign ministry of Bolivia officially confirmed today that the president, Luis Arce, is not going to attend either. And this is an article in Agencia de Noticias Fides, and it says the Bolivian foreign ministry confirms that Luis Arce will not participate in the Summit of the Americas in the United States. And instead, they're going to send the Bolivian ambassador to the OAS, Hector Arce, who's going to represent Bolivia. But the president of Bolivia, Luis Arce, is not going to attend. So this is yet another blow to this U.S. summit. And AMLO gave a speech and he said, it's actually not the summit of the Americas. It's the summit of the friends of the United States. And that's basically what has happened. Finally, before I conclude here, I want to point out that in California, there are a series of protests that have been planned featuring thousands of people from not just the United States, but from around the world. So this is the website that has created a series of protests. It is called the People's Summit, and you can find it at peoplesummit2022.org, the People's Summit for Democracy. And they, from June 8th to June 10th, are hosting a series of protests, workshops, concerts. It's going to be like a big party with, with a bunch of protests against the Summit of the Americas. And it's being organized and sponsored by the Answer Coalition, by Code Pink, by the ALBA Movement. That's the social movement arm of the Bolivarian Alliance which is this anti-imperialist economic alliance bringing together the socialist countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, condemning U.S. imperialism. So their social movement arm, which is called Alba Movimientos, they are also participating. Uh, the AFT, American Federation of Teachers Union, has endorsed it as well, along with the Los Angeles Tenants Union, the International People's Assembly, the People's Forum, uh, a local of SEIU, Local 721, 
and also labor against racism and war. So this is a coalition group and they have a series of protests planned from June 8th to June 10th. You can see their program here. They have a lot of exciting programs, a lot of exciting activities that they have planned, including concerts and workshops and panels and marches and protests. And you can read about the mobilization here. So if you are in California, if you are near Los Angeles, you should definitely check out the protest going on. This is being organized by the People Summit, and you can find more information at People Summit 22, 20, excuse me, People Summit 2022, People Summit 2022.org. And this week, I'm going to be doing an interview about those protests and about the U.S. failure in the Summit of the Americas and this massive historic backlash by countries in Latin America against U.S. imperialism and its attempt to try to divide Latin America.